So let's write our first uh, Perl script and save this in a file and run it and see how it works. This, what you can see in grey, is basically the first script. You can open your text editor, type it in, that's the best without, except of uh, copy paste might be a more error prone than typing in. And then you save it as, uh, let's say, hello underscore the world dot pl. And once you saved it, you can go switch the command line and type Perl and the name of the script and it will print out hello world and then next line it will print out 42. Before going on the slide let's see what we can see in this script. So the first three lines are basically uh, some kind of a header. It's not required but it's very uh, well recommended to put it in every script. And then here down is uh, the actual Perl script. As you can see there are two print statements here. The statements are separated with semicolons, or they are ending with semicolons. Print gets a, a, a string in quote in uh, double quotes, so the word hello space and world, and then backslash n represents a new line. So this statement will print out hello world to the screen and then print a new line. Uh, and the next line you will see, you can see that uh, here print gets actually two values separated by a comma, a number which doesn't need a quote, any quotes, because that's a number, and the string which is just a new line, so we'll, we'll see the 42 printed and then follow that by the new line. As I said, you can just save this uh, as it is and run it with Perl and hello world.pl on the command line. Now, why, would I s why did I save it as .pl? Uh, if you're using uh, Linux or Unix, it doesn't have any uh, sort of understanding what an extension is. On Windows, and act uh, actually uh, today also on modern lin Linuxes, uh, some uh, things, mostly like editors, are recognizing files based on their extensions. So when you're opening a file uh, that has a .pl extension, then most of your editors will recognize it as a Perl script and will be able to color, color it uh, according to the standards of, of, uh, of a Perl script, so understanding what, uh, what are keywords in Perl and what are not and so on. So while you don't have to use the extension .pl, it's very recommended, mostly so that your editor and your uh, environment will better understand what kind of file you are talking about. Otherwise, there are people who just recommend against it because from the user's point of view it doesn't really matter what language the program was written in. So that's about the extension here. Now on Unix systems people are used to running uh, scripts or executables without typing Perl in front of that. In order to do that you have you need a couple of things. One of them first of all is that you here you need this line. So without this line uh, the Unix shell will not understand that you're talking about a Perl script, regardless of its extension. This actually needs to point to your Perl executable, to the executable of Perl itself. So, and because it's in slash usr slash bin slash Perl usually, that's where what we have here. This is called the shbang or shebang or it has various names. That's one thing you need. And the other thing is you have to turn it into an executable. And for that you write this command, change mode, u plus x, so the user uh, can execute it, and then the name of the screen, script. That will turn the script into an executable. So from now on you can type dot slash hello world, sorry for the line break here, and you will be able to run this uh, script um, without explicitly writing that's a Perl script. If you're dot directory, if the local directory was in the pass, in the pass environment, then you wouldn't even need the dot slash. You just, just can type the name of the program and uh, run it. So what you see here, so here is that statements are separated with uh, semicolons, and then within statements uh, parameters can be separated with uh, commas, and then print can uh, uh, print something to the screen. Use strict and use warnings, we haven't talked about it, we'll talk about it in the next uh, chapter. Before going on, let's just have a look at how this actually works. I switch over to the editor. Here I already have a really simple Perl script, 
print and hello world it doesn't have all the fancy things around it and uh, it's saved as hello.pl now I switch to the command line here I can type Perl and then hello.pl I can run it and then you can see it's printed hello world we'll go on from this example in the next chapter